after they were withdrawn from service as uh, basic trainers for the RAF and the fleet air arm. Now on runway 21, ready to get airborne for uh, its display slot. To be followed by three magnificent fighting flying machines from the dark days of the Second World War. The uh, collection of Supermarine Spitfire Mark V. Both aircraft taxiing along the uh, flight line. Take a look at the registration number on the red super cup that belongs to the collection. Uh, that uh, apply to the aircraft in recognition of the fact that the Shuttleworth Veteran Aeroplane uh, Society actually provided the funds for us to obtain that machine and bring it into the collection. The sole purpose of providing us with a very interesting aerial map, but also one that was capable of taking our gliders into the skies. The uh, Boston Gladiator took off a few minutes ago. Uh, if you did remember, you might be wondering where she'd gone. Well, she was off in a holding pack waiting for her display slot. And here she is now, the RAF's last biplane fighter from plane that they are perhaps best associated with is uh, the fast jet trainer used by the RAF but also the mount for the uh, Red Arrows aerobatic display team, the aircraft they have before their current hawks, the Fallen Hat. from the Bristol Mercury 39 cylinder radial engine in the nose, 257 miles an hour. And the major difference between this and uh, earlier biplane fighters was the armament, because right the way up until the 1930s, the armament of fighters are standardized from the standard twin machine guns from the First World War. Well, this aircraft doubled it, this aircraft has four. Three or three machine guns on either side of the fuselage, the breeches extending back into the cockpit, and two in little packages you can see underneath the bottom wing. Romeo Kilo, this example was the last of the Mark I gladiators to be built in 1937. All the bits were there, it wasn't actually put together until a year later in 1938. Another example of a machine that by the outbreak of war was really obsolete and very quickly being replaced by monoplane fighters. Well, that was the plan anyway. Gladiators saw active service, took about the Norwegian campaign. Yeah. And of course, during the Battle of Britain as well, like Four Seven Squadron operated uh, gladiators based down there at Eastleigh, Southampton Airport. Collection pilots who find the gladiators they want to see right to fly. One of the hardest things to master is actually closing the cockpit canopy and getting it open again. But as a machine in the sky, a beautiful aeroplane to fly. Well balanced controls, nice powerful engine up front. became a firm favourite with RAF pilots, particularly those squadron aerobatic teams. A very famous photograph of uh, 92 Squadron, I think it was, flying three gladiators tied together with bunting between the interplane struts. Christmas, was it? No? Well, there's 
Perhaps engine sounds that doesn't sound strong enough, does it, to put the air... things like the Hendon Empire Air Days and they take off and fly their aerobatics in formation tied together which must be incredibly difficult to know and their finale would then pull up towards the crowd do a Prince of Wales break and snap with the strings on the bunting and then come in to land individually Besides from serving in the Norwegian campaign and the Battle of Britain during the Second World War Famous for the defence of Malta, gladiators also soldiered on in the Western Desert campaign, right the way up until the last Met flight gladiators were retired in 44. design concept of derivative